Okay, we're live. <laughs> okay, we, we are live. And thank you so much for joining me on this. This will be amazing because Joby is one of the top practitioners, QHHT practitioners in the world. And she is absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that she has seen so many people in her office that have managed to heal themselves. And I'm sure she's pretty grateful to facilitate for them. So please welcome Jovi and feel free to tell me anything that your heart desires. <laughs> well, thank you, John. Thank you for having me today. So what would you like me to talk about? Any physical healings that, that you may have seen and been, mm -hmm. been grateful to, to witness? Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I've been doing QHT since 2013. And throughout all these years, I've seen time and again, amazing magical healing from the session. Um, just this morning, I thought about this lady. I gave her a QHT session many years ago in Malaysia. She came in with this neck and shoulder problem for a long time, you know, for decades. And she has been to specialists, different types of doctors to check, they found nothing. But because of the intense pain, she couldn't sleep for over 30 minutes to an hour at a time. So wow. imagine that. She couldn't have a good night of sleep at nighttime and she always wake up feeling tired, you know, not enough energy and all of that. Wow, for, for so, how long? How, how long did she suffer was that for? For at least a good 30 years, if not more. 30 years? Wow. It would be longer than that. I now can't remember the exact number of years, but it's been for wow. a long time. Yeah, it was bothering her. So we got to see this very interesting lifetime during the hypnosis part. And at first, you know, of course she was lying on the bed with her eyes closed. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm just going to imitate her to show that to you now. Oh, good. Your eye closed. And all of a sudden she was like, oh, it's so painful. It's so painful. It's so painful. That's all she could said, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end, we found out she was being birthed, but those people saw that she was a girl. They didn't want any girl at that time. They twist her neck and kill her right there. And that fear that couldn't understand why that intense pain just got trapped in not just her body, but the cellular memory, mm -hmm. lifetime after lifetime that has been following her and it was still there. So by having that understanding and by understanding that this is not her now, that was happened in the past, she no longer needs to carry on that energy, that pain. And we also was guided by her higher self to do a forgiveness ritual to just forgive all the people involved because at that time, um, in that place, that was the culture, the people's culture, that was you know the limitation, the belief um, or they have limited resources, that's all they could do. And that's all people were doing. So they mm. did not know better. They did not mean to specifically to harm her. Understanding of her soul had a part to choose that experience as well, just to be a cooperative component for the whole experience. So by that understanding, just completely release her pain. And after that two and a half, maximum three hours, I can't remember now, hypnosis, she got up and she told me it was a miracle in itself already because I've never lied down for this long without feeling mm. pain. And the entire time I was feeling good. And she got up and she was, you know, moving her body parts and sensing it. And she was like, the pain is gone, the pain is gone. And then she continued to WhatsApp me almost every day for the next 10 days, telling me how excited she was, <sighs> how good of a sleep she had the night before. And you know, all of this thing, she was just overjoyed. Wow. Yeah. So, so from your perspective, tell, tell me, so was that the soul remembering or was it, was it energy trapped in, in, in her neck well, or? 
this is my understanding. You know, mm. um, it's a bit of everything. It's like with that trauma, the energy just get trapped, not just in the physical body, but also, you know, in, in the soul's level of remembering. And in actual fact, it's quantum. Everything is happening at the same time. Mm. Like we call it the past life, but you know, everything is in, yeah. in, in fact happening at the same time. So it's just, that is still happening. So that is bridging through and affecting not just this lifetime that we are focused on, perhaps other lifetimes that are simultaneously happening at the same time, but not with just one. Imagine it's so intense that it, it affects many and all mm. this many affects this one, right? But yes. if at that point we get the release, we get the forgiveness going on, we get the understanding. So by this one, like the origin of it got resolved, the rest got resolved as well. Yes, so the pain doesn't need you, to be there. Yeah, does that make sense? You, totally. You you got to the actual cause of it, the yes. real the real cause. And, and and that's the beauty of QHT. We don't go to just treat the symptom. We go to find out the root cause of any yeah. issue. That's, that's why, you know, no matter how many doctors she has gone to, you know, how many scans she did, they couldn't find anything because it wasn't because of that. It wasn't on the physical level. Yeah, it's because they couldn't understand. I, I always say, I always say it like this. I explain it to my clients like this. I say, if you've got say, a piece of steel in your hand, the hand is going to tell you that there's something going on. So it's, mm -hmm. so it's, going, to be, it's going to be painful. Sometimes if you go to a doctor, a doctor will just give you an antidepressant or, or what, whatever medication, a painkiller, just to numb it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just talking about it with somebody, it's, it's still there. And so we're the ones doing the QHHT and well, it's actually your, your higher self because we, we just ask questions, but your higher self will be the one that actually gets it. And it might be a little bit emotional, but it's just going to go. Once you get to the cause and you heal the cause and you, and you release all the energy that was trapped in there, it goes away. Yeah. And it, and it may take a little bit of time to, to heal, but it is so much better. And then you get on with your life and then it just becomes a past memory. Yes. A past experience. Yes. That's that's my understanding of it. Get to the get to the cause, get to the root cause. That's that's the beauty of it. That's what I love so much about this modality. Because in QHT, we are able to take our clients very deep into the consciousness and where their analytical mind, thinking mind is resting we can just go directly into the inner wisdom, you know, the mm. higher self or the inner being, whatever we love to refer them to and just work from that space, work from that all knowing space to get to the mm. root cause of, you know, any issues, any problems, any challenge, be it physical or relationship or mental or emotional, you know, anything we get to know why. And then from that space of understanding we will get to know what is the best way to address it then. Sometimes it's just some forgiveness is needed. Sometimes your higher self has the ability to heal you. Sometimes it takes you to decide on changing something, maybe some habits that are not supportive of your life, um, maybe some lifestyle thing, maybe just some um, decisions that you need to make to empower yourself, to start loving yourself. But whatever it is, your higher self, your inner wisdom, that part within you knows the best. That is magical because I'm pretty sure that that client of yours had absolutely no idea what was what was stored in her in her consciousness. <laughs> absolutely yeah. no idea at all. Probably yeah. blew her out of the park. <laughs> who would have thought, right? Then I have another gentleman who came in with some crutches. He has MC, multiple sclerosis, and it was hard for him to walk. It was painful. Um, he had sit all kind of help, but 
Um, he wasn't getting anywhere. It was almost like the last resort. He wanted mm -hmm. to try out everything. And then he read about Dolores Cannon. He heard about QHT. So he came to me for a session. And we, through talking to his higher self, during the hypnosis part, we realized the reason why he had this condition in life. Um, it wasn't because of any past life, any other lifetimes thing. The body manifests this condition to get him out of trouble because he could have been a part of the family business, which will not be legal. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way for him to get out of it. Because an excuse. Yes, because otherwise there won't be any chance for him to say no. But wow. this is a natural condition to get him off those troubles. And he is not meant to be going down that path with the rest of the family. And so would you, in so, sorry, sorry to put him, but so would you say that he created that himself? Well, it's not, he consciously created himself, but mm. it was it was like the best course for him. The soul knows about this. The high self knows about this. It has to happen so that it won't allow him to get on that path. So I continue to ask now that, you know, he's totally off that path. He knows he's moving towards another direction. So this condition is no longer needed, right? And the high self said, of course, it's not needed. So I requested healing. And guess what happened when he got up? What? He sat up on my bed. Um, I went to get the crutches for him. And he stood up and he did it like very symbolic gesture. Just let go of the crutches. Wow. And he walked across my healing studio without needing to use the crutches. Wow. He walked into my stu healing studio in pain, like holding onto those crutches. But he was, and he was even walking like this, all smiling with his arms extending out, like proudly walking across my healing studio several times. And imagine my joy seeing him at that time. Wow. Wow. That's quite profound, isn't it? That's amazing. And so how does, as a professional QHHT practitioner, how does that make you feel when that happened? Oh, it feels amazing. It feels, it's hard to describe. It's just so much joy in my heart. Like, you know, I am a part that contribute to this miracle like mm. wow how blessed am i how how wonderful is this to help people to empower themselves that facilitate this healing that's basically done by himself his higher self right mm. and i get mm. to assist in the way i could isn't it a beautiful thing it's like i feel so proud of myself and i feel just so Lucky is not a word. I just feel so blessed to be mm. doing this work. Like, wow, you know, me, really? We're all just so blessed, so blessed to, to do this. Yeah, yeah, all mm. the time. And, mm. you know, people don't always come for physical healing, although some sometimes they do. But, you know, the other sessions that doesn't involve, I mean, the other sessions that don't involve physical healing, they're equally amazing, you know, witnessing them, having those realization, understanding, and, you know, yeah. the guidance that they need to move on, um, the understanding of how and why things play out the way they did and what they can do about it. Um, and then see how their life change is quite mind blowing. <laughs> There's another lady pop up to my mind. It's, it's a rather interesting story. Well, she came to me when she was um, having breast cancer. She went through a whole bunch of chemotherapy. So she got to a very, very, very thin body. 
um, she lost all her hair. Um, she just looked so thin and so weak. I actually went to her house because, you know, she was too weak to go to elsewhere. So I went to her house to give her that QHT session. And this lady actually had a lot of anger without even realizing it, without noticing it. Mm. So the pre-talk prior to the hypnosis was really good to allow her to connect the dots by herself. I was just there compassionately listening and asking her questions so that she could kind of understand, oh, okay. And then when we did the hypnosis part, very interesting. She did not get any past life, any other lifetime at all. And I have this hunch that invite her higher self to talk like right there. And the higher self starts speaking to me. And I was told that her body was too weak. It's not time for seeing any lifetime. It's time to go straight to healing. I'm like, okay, yeah. right on, let's go. And she felt so many different sensations and energies and you know, healing energy flow through her body. Um, her body was moving at times. I was facilitating the whole process and we were giving a, given a lot of good advices and guidance as to how to heal her condition. The high self told her to stop doing any chemotherapy, told her to stop watching TV as an escape to the physical reality. High self told her to start doing yoga, start doing natural medicine like the traditional Chinese medicine rather than those Western medicine. Mm -hmm. So the high self told her a whole bunch of things that you know would be the most beneficial to support her full recovery. At the end of the session, she woke up. She felt so great. She became very chattery. We just talk and she was all excited. And guess what? She drove me home. She was that full of energy and she was like oh no need to get the taxi i would just drive you home wow. I'm like, are you sure but she was all energized very happy and everything so you know i was really really good and then after a little while i think i sent her a message just to check on how she was she never got back to me until a few months later and there came the story she admitted to me that you know Although she could totally feel the healing energy, you know, everything that went on during the session, everything makes sense. And she felt so much better, but she still felt like listening to the doctor because the doctor said, oh, you still need to go through, for example, eight more um, chemotherapy. Mm. She just thought, okay, what if I cut it down to four? At least I'm listening in part to my higher self and not doing as many. So she made peace with that decision, but she continued to watch TV, you know, never really started yoga, not going for the, you know, um, alternative medicine, natural mm -hmm. medicine, like the um, TCM thing. So right on the day before um, she was booked for the chemo, she found a little hole in her breast. I, I couldn't even understand how that happened. It's, there's a hole. And then she called the doctor and the doctor said, oh no, you cannot have the treatment tomorrow because we have to wait until the hole closes up back up before you can do it. So, and the doctor said, we don't know how long it will take, but we'll just have to wait because you know, in that condition, we can't possibly yeah. do any chemo. So she was forced to wait. And during the period of time that she waited, she finally stopped watching TV, start doing yoga, start looking for TCM help. And by the time that holes closed back down, she went in and checked, guess what the doctor said? What? There's no need for chemo. Wow. She actually did what? Oh, I said I've told her. And mm. the cancer was gone. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So lucky her, her higher self intervened 
with that little hole in her breast, right? And she finally really listened. Amazing. And did what the high self told her to. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's amazing, truly. Life changing. And mm -hmm. then I saw her post later on on Facebook. You know, gaining the weight back, having hair, traveling. You know, doing things that she loves to do. Yeah. Wow! How amazing. It is, but you know, it brings out another point I want to touch on is, you know, a QHT session is not a magical pill. You don't just come for the session, took the pill and then all is fine. You really have to listen to your own high self guidance, mm. right? And no matter how amazing the session is, if you don't listen, if you don't follow the guidance, which is basically from your own in a wisdom, which knows you the best, which knows what is the best for you. If you don't listen, if you don't follow through, no one can force you to do anything. No one can force you into healing, mm. right? Oh, how amazing, like, you must have the best job in the, in the universe. <laughs> we do, we do, yeah. I mean, it, it's yeah. just amazing. And I just had another session with a lady. She has a lot of physical issues, really a lot. Um, I don't want to go into details. Um, it's just a lot. Um, but we addressed that one by one, like kicking everything to the curb. And it was just amazing. Did, know, so, would call. What? So, so for that one, was there many different causes or did it did it barrel down to like one or two really core causes um, or the, the many different reasons and courses but there are also a pattern you know some key ones um related to her emotions she didn't want to let go of some old emotions with mm -hmm. the false belief that it was better to make her safe and then she needs to be the one who choose to let go before full healing can happen. Yeah, how, how did she go with that? Did, did she agree to it? She Is did, it? she did. Because that, that, can, that can be really scary because I would imagine that it's so familiar to her that even though she didn't like it, she probably still felt, felt in some kind of funny way, still felt safe. Okay. Well, but yes, but it's just an illusion that my had about that. Mm. Yeah. I, I kind of reason with that part of her with the high self together until she acknowledged that, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't need to hold on to that. I can totally let it go. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what um, Dolores talks about. Stuffed emotions, even if you're not even aware of them, if you're stuffing them, they've got a store in the body somewhere. That energy has got to churn something. If somebody gets angry or hurt or sad, the energy, if it's not expressed, it gets stuffed and then it starts churning and then it starts causing diseases and all sorts of negative stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. And people, people aren't even aware of what started it because it could have happened so long ago that they feel like they've left it in the past but unconsciously, it's still, it's still stuffed down. Yeah, it's just, you know, the layers. Sometimes we thought we have totally addressed that, um, but we, we are not aware that some are still there unconsciously, still kind of like a program running. Mm. Um, I always like to use this metaphor. It's like you have a really old washing machine that becomes so loud, but you don't notice the noise because you're very used to it. Mm -hmm. If you invite me to come to your house, I may be in shock, like, John, what is going <laughs> on? It's noisy, but for you, it's like, <sighs> what? It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Simply because you're so used to it for so mm -hmm. long, right? Yeah. They become the background noise that you no longer notice. It becomes familiar. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Wow, how amazing. They're, they're one of my favorite, 
favorite healing ones is, is the emotional ones. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And at the end of the day, emotions are not bad things at all. They are just wonderful indicators for us to notice, you know, something is going on within us, you know, something it just needs us to address. Mm. Acknowledge. Right? That's, Acknowledge. That's, that's my belief. My belief is that we're all, we're all here to be a human and to experience emotions. Yeah. It's, it's my belief that humans are the only ones in the universe that can feel all, all emotions, but we have the different spectrums in between the emotions, and we have this amazing ability to jump emotions in a split second. And it's just incredible. Like people can be the happiest people in the world and then you'll get a phone call and something tragic's happened and then it's all of a sudden it's switched, bang, you're, you're into sadness. Or you, you could be at work and you could be having a bad day, but then you, you, you might get a bonus or something like that. And then you switch out of it and you're like, oh, wow, it's, it's amazing. It's that's my belief is the emotion. That's, that's what we're here for. Don't stuff them. Yeah. It's, it's another thing that we should look at is how we allow the environment to affect us. Like you said, you have been having a chill, good, happy day, and something happened. Oh, you got into, you know, the other end of the spectrum. But what if, you know, we keep that joy in us we don't allow the environment to affect us. We don't just mm. react. We mm. choose how we want to feel. That's the true mm. self-empowerment, right? I always feel like it's my belief that life's a game and the mm. game is whether we're going to conquer ourselves and find I our own like inner to peace. The, to use the word master as opposed to conquer. It's, <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a perception, it's, it's a word, yeah. But I find that if you master yourself, well, then you find your own inner peace with who you are. Mm-hmm. And then once you find mm-hmm. that own inner peace, well, then you're content. You're, you're, you're in the 5D world then. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my belief. Mm. That's, the, that's the 5D new earth that, that we're chasing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's not an yeah. external factor, it's an internal factor. And it's never a physical location. It's, it's your state of being. Right, 100%. I'll 100% agree. Mm-hmm. Awesome. There's, um, I, I had one guy in here, and he actually grew two inches. I couldn't believe it. I was, oh, my God. Yeah. It was amazing. I was talking to his higher self, and then... His higher self was saying, "Oh, he's, he feels like he's been stuffed down his whole life, and he's and you know he's been felt makes been made to feel small his whole life." So mm-hmm. I said, "I'm going to give him a bonus, and he's just grown two inches." Wow. I went, "Excuse me, heaven?" He said, "Notice on the foot of the chair because I use a recliner chair," and he said, "When he came in here, his ankles were on the on the recliner bit." And he said, "Have a look now." And his ankles were off it. And he mm-hmm. and I was and I was watching because because I watch people for signs and and just make sure mm-hmm. that they're nice and comfortable. And, and his head mm-hmm. didn't move. His body didn't move. I was like, and when he got up, he was actually taller than me. When he came in, he was shorter than me. I was like, how cool is that? It's amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I I haven't heard I haven't heard back from him. So amazing. Yeah, um, Suzanne Spooner had one lady, and she her one of her legs grew because she was always out of alignment. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and Suzanne Spooner caught up with her like six or eight months later, and and it was perfectly incredible. Honestly, there's no limit. There's no limit to what can incredible. be done. Incredible. Mm. Yeah, the more the client is in the receiving mode, completely open without any expectation, just open and allow and trust that part within them, the better it gets. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely it is. amazing. Mm. We have the best job in the world, right? 
we do. We do. We're so we're so lucky. We're so lucky. Mm. Yeah. But but you've obviously put a lot of work in, into yourself. So tell me, for you, on a personal note, mm-hmm. um, because I know myself, I've had to really go inside and do a hell of a lot of healing on myself personally. So what what about what what about you? You mean my own journey? Yeah. Have, 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 you, have you had anything that you've had to heal yourself or, or anything like that? Well, not so much on the physical side, um, more on the emotional side, I suppose. You know, um, childhood trauma, things that I didn't know existed, you know, that I mm. suppressed. I was just talking to one of my coaching clients this morning, um, sharing an experience. Um, I am the number seventh of my family, we have that many siblings, I was the accident. Um, My mom didn't want me because all my older siblings, they're two years apart and I'm six years younger than the last sister. So by the time, you know, my mom gave birth to the number six child, she thought I'm retired. I'm not going to give birth to any more babies. (sighs) I don't blame her. And then six years later, she was pregnant. She did not warn me, right? So um, she even wanted to take an abortion. But the interesting thing is, she's the most loving, kind lady in the world. But ever since I was a toddler, my computer is running out of battery. I need to get this. Ever since I was a toddler, have any idea of words, she would be telling me the story about me being unwanted. Oh, wow. Like, I was just lucky to be born because my father said to her, oh, might as well have this last one. And then here you are. And up till today, I still don't understand why she said that. And she kept saying that to me when I was little. Speaking of an old washing machine, the loud sound become the background noise. I didn't even notice that was affecting me for so long Mm -hmm. until maybe a couple of years ago mm-hmm. that self-worth that i'm not good enoughness all of that and that working extra hard to be perfect you know all of that stuff and then there was another occasion that my only brother um two chinese people having a son used to be very important right and he was the only boy in the family and he mm-hmm. He was diagnosed with cancer when he was 17 years old or 18 years old. And yeah. I was only eight years old. The whole, the whole dynamics of the family changed. Yeah. Um, I was the golden child because I was the only child in the family. Everyone else grew up. Um, I had all the attention. I had all the love and care and everything. And from that, all of a sudden, no one had any time for me. So imagine that trauma, that, that shock, um, mm, the shift. that young age, I couldn't comprehend what was going on, what was happening. And the best way to deal with that was to suppress. So I actually had suppressed a lot of things without me even noticing it. And knowing it, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then after my brother passed away, just within a year, my mom, any little thing can trigger her. You know, her temper changed, everything changed. Um, it was like, you have to be perfect or extra perfect in order to be safe at home. Otherwise you'll get yelled at, otherwise you'll get picked on, otherwise you'll upset her, otherwise you'll make her cry. Mm. So without me consciously knowing that, it formed my, I don't know whether it's personality or, or how do you describe it, but that desire mm. to be always perfect, because mm. if not, you will not be safe. Yeah. That was very strong. So a lot of things, and I'm sure, you know, similar things happen to other people, but in different ways. A lot of things happened even in early childhood that we didn't know how to deal with. We, yeah, we didn't know it was even there. But just like you talk about emotions, if we don't address them, if we don't really look into them, 
heal them、mm. and let them go, they will always be there, right? Affecting your entire life, and will just magnify like snowballing with your other life circumstances that trigger you having the same feeling, then reinforce your same belief, all of that snowball. So, my my work on myself is always about cultivating that awareness. And the self love and self compassion. Yes, I am this, but so what? Let's let's find out how to deal with it. Let's <laughs> figure out. And then I have a strong connection with my own higher self. You know, thanks to the work that I've been doing、um, since two thousand and thirteen, I can channel my higher self now. I can talk to my higher、yeah. self. I can、mm. get into a meditative state. You know, ask questions, get answers, and you know, I will be pointed to. To the people that I need to get help with, or a teacher that I need to learn something from,、um, a mentor, a session, what or whatever. So I just, I just follow my guidance. Yeah. So, if I can just give one advice, it will be work on your connection with your own high self, your inner guidance, because、mm-hmm. that's always the best, and that will guide you to what you need, where you want to go. What would serve you the best at the right time?、Mm. And、What's、just trust. Your intuition. Yeah, and just trust. You know, at the right time, the issue will pop to the surface, and that would be the time when you're ready to look at it,、mm. to address it, to tend to it, and also have patience because this is not a competition, and this is not about oh, I work on it. I have to get everything done today. Not at all. I used、It's、to be、journey. like that years ago. I think you know it was it was the behavior trail for my corporate life. I was in the corporate world for almost twenty years. It's it's the behavior you want to get everything done by yesterday. You want it now.、Mm-hmm. You want to get everything completed,、um, but it's not the case. And sometimes you know you 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 think going the shortest distance would be the best, but then you miss all the scenery. Around the way, and that's the best for you to go the slow route, not the quickest one, because the quickest is boring. It may even be dangerous, right? So just just trust life, and have this strong connection with your own inner wisdom, your own high、mm-hmm. self. Another thing about QHC that I like so much is because it shows to our clients that they have this ability. They are always connected to their higher self. It's just that they don't normally notice that, or they are too much in their head, so that they don't listen, right? They come in, they did a QHC session with us. It shows them that you know they can do it now. They can do it again and again.、Mm. That's very empowering to me. That's beautiful that that you worked on yourself and and、yeah. I always say that.、Um, As if, as a child, if you get told the story that you're unwanted or you're unworthy or you can't do that or you this or you that, there comes a point in that child's life where the you becomes I. So I am unworthy. I I can't do this. I am what whatever whatever it is. Um. But see, um. That's that's the mind. How the mind. How. A human being is developed under、yes. the age of seven. You know, it's the 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 brain wave is mostly operate in the、it's、unconscious.、Open. Yeah, it anything they just receive it without、Absorb. doubting, without analyzing. Yeah, so anything being projected onto the child, they will take it as fact. Yeah, that's that's exactly what Dolores Cannon always said. We choose our parents. The challenges that they give us. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's that's so beautiful. And then sometimes you master yourself, and sometimes you don't. And if you don't, well, then you just get another go next and, time. And that's perfect too, right?、Hmm. We are always perfect as at where we are.、Hmm. That's right.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beautifully, beautifully put. Cool. cool. Thank you so so much. So, if people want to get hold of you. What's the best way to get hold of you? Well, they can come to my website, 
www.lurswisdom.com. L-U-R-U-S wisdom. W-I-S-D-O-M.com. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Okay, thank you so much. And if they want to get hold of me, um, my website is up there. If yeah. you're lucky enough to be in, in Hong Kong or around that area, Joby is amazing. I've had a personal session with her and she is absolutely tops. She is amazing. And you, you travel around the world sometimes. So yes. just check out your, just jump on the website and check out her schedule and hopefully you'll be able to book in a, in a session with her. So mm-hmm. thank you so, so much, Joby. We're grateful. Thank you.